Hey, it's Adam here and you're watching The Culture Hack. Where we're talking about how to create engaged workspaces that unlock the potential of your teams and drive your business forward in ways you've never seen. So stay tuned. All right, welcome to another episode of The Culture Hack. I'm super excited to have an HR specialist in here today to talk about culture. I have Tom Nichols. He is the founder and CEO of Castle HR. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for coming on. Perfect. Thanks, Adam. Great to be here. Really appreciate the invite and happy to uh, to chat about all things engagement today. Right. Awesome. Now, before I ask you about that sign behind you, tell us about C Castle HR. <laughs> What's your story? What do you guys do? Yeah, oh, we'll, we'll go way over the 10 minutes if I get into my whole story on everything, but I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the elevator pitch, Coles Notes kind of version here. So Castle HR is an outsourced uh, HR consulting firm. We specialize in helping startups and small businesses build high impact HR strategies to really promote growth and help them scale. So we're very niche in the market as far as where we play. Like we only really help companies that have found that product market fit and then can see far down the road, they're going to hire HR get them. So we kind of bridge that gap and set companies up for that success with attracting talent, retaining talent, you know, ensuring you're compliant, uh, creating that winning culture and engagement that we're going to get into. So all those things, we build out processes and, and systems for companies that want to scale. Okay. Amazing. Sounds like sounds like we should talk. Like that's the world where I'm living in right now. But uh, I like that sign behind you. I said I'm gonna ask about it. So Google does not have an HR degree. So what's the inspiration there? Yeah, it's just it's it's often funny when we were starting off talking with people and be like, well, I looked up this policy, or we jump in and start working with people, and they just have a mishmash of policies or documents, and we found ones that were based for Arizona, we have ones that were based in the UK. And it's like Google just will give you random things. Like Google doesn't have an HR degree. You really need somebody to navigate it and give you the proper documents. And then I just like to have a little bit of fun. So I can put silly things on my sign that amuses me um, at okay. that point. And obviously great like conversation starters. Right? Cool. And you know, we are talking about culture and engagement, and that's a great example of, of kind of leading with that fun kind of ideas. So, so in your travels and, you know, from the HR perspective that you guys offer, like what, what does culture and engagement mean to you guys? Yeah, it's really one of those foundational pieces for us. When we, we talk to companies, it's, we always start with values and looking for engagement um, and, and sort of we're, we're big fans of EOS and looking at the right people. Um, on that side. So there's sort of three things that we really look for when we're going for engagement. One is that clarity and alignment on your mission, right? Like if your whole team knows where you're going and buys into what your company is trying to achieve, they're naturally going to be engaged. Like people that join nonprofits usually have more of that uh, self-investment for that role. You can still get that as a private business as well. The second one is EOS, as I mentioned, like the right people, right seat mentality. If you've read Traction, which is over there as well, mm -hmm. um, more conversation starters uh, for that. We're huge fans of that and we run that internally, like having the right people in the right seat consistently through your firm really means that you have that value alignment. You have people that are, are succeeding and working well. That's going to foster engagement. People are going to be you know, with the light switch on, working well with peers um, on that side. And the third one I was going to bring up is recognition, something that a lot of people don't talk about when they talk about engagement, but OKRs do a great way of uh, re offering recognition for my background is in sales. And like I built sales teams that bang on phones all day. We're making 100 cold calls, getting 97 no's to maybe get those three yeses. So it's a mm -hmm. very, very tough job. But OKRs or recognition can really show you that, hey, those hundred dials lead all the way to the success and growth of the company. And if you can tie that recognition in, that's where engagement comes sort of full circle to us on that side. Uh, so it's really, those three things are what we focus on and what I try to make sure that we're, we're constantly doing. Mm -hmm. I love it. So we got a clear mission, the, the EOS mentality, right people in the right seats. Um, and then of course, tying it back, right? The, the recognition for how, whatever you do in your role connects to the greater vision mission of the company. Yeah. 
And especially the recognition is honestly something I struggled with as a founder because we're mm -hmm. wired to always think what's next, right? We're mm -hmm. always looking forward. Like in my head, I'm 12 months in the future with Castle, but it's so important to pause and look back for myself included to offer that recognition of how far we have come and be like, mm -hmm. hey, ask Tom would have high five to be at this moment. So good job. Right. Like those things matter to more to your team, but also to founders can, can learn from that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for your own energy. Do you, do you have an example? Like, did you have an epiphany moment where, you're, where you were like, you know what, we need to stop and recognize how far we've come? It's one of those. So when we went through EOS, it was one of those things because you build out these future plans of like one, three, five, 10, 20 year plans. And no one really has any idea where you're going to be. But looking back at them and then measuring where you thought you would be, you often underestimate where your company can go to. Um, it's what we found at VC that I'm just bad at forecasting this stuff. Um, <laughs> although with, which it's an art in itself. Also we like in an HR firm, like the, the whole COVID situation did put a lot of wind in our sails as well when we started this out. So we smashed some of our targets and where we were going for, and it was also like, okay, what's next? We get caught up in it. So when we sat down and actually brought on like a, a proper implementer for EOS, it was a pause to recognize how far we've come and the fact that we can afford to have an implementer come in and pay someone to coach us. Like it was just a realization then, which was a, a really good epiphany and sort of moment where I stood there with a little bit of a stupor on my face. Okay, I, I love it, I love it. Like, holy smokes, what just happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it is, as I said, like future Tom or past Tom would have been like all over this and taken it in a second, right? And so many founders are the same way. There's so many great people doing great things out there, um, but it's great to pause sometimes and realize what we've accomplished and to recognize a team that helped get us there. Right. Absolutely. So you've, sounds like you've been on a journey, you've grown fast, you brought in EOS, you started recognizing, celebrating those, those wins. Looking forward. Do you have plans in your head as Castle HR continues to grow, how to continue to engage that team, whether they're remote or, you know, as AI comes into the mix, like what's, what's, what's in your head there? Yeah, AI is all over the place. Like we, we try to strategically use that, but we're not very good at it yet um, for that. But like our plans to keep going forward is continuing what we've been doing a lot of the time. And, and we're one of those companies that definitely drink our own champagne. So a lot of things we suggest to our clients or set up with them are things that we've tested on ourselves first mm -hmm. uh, for that. So one of those is we're, we're doing quarterly town halls. So we get everyone together. Uh, we're very transparent on our numbers, where we are. So we share that success to, to sort of have that. We don't practice OKR, but that mentality of here's the top numbers, here's how everything is moving. Here's new additions to the team. Here's celebrations over here. Uh, we also use it to highlight values. Like uh, I got in this habit now, which is time consuming, but fun is all of our values have very specific meanings or basically virtues at this point. And I go mm -hmm. through our slide for the last quarter and find silly pictures and things that we shared that sort of line up in some way with our values. And then we all sort of have a chuckle about it and sort of laugh as we go through it. So having that kind of engagement and, and making sure people see that, especially if they put up pictures of their kids, they just love it, um, doing things like that. So everyone has a blast with that. But that, that keeps the, the engagement, the mission clarity is obviously talked about. We reiterate what we're doing, who we're looking to help, what we did well that quarter really amplifies that engagement level with the team. Um, the next thing is we do quarterly surveys uh, as well. So we'll send out uh, surveys to everybody on the team, give them an opportunity to have feedback loop. I believe it's super important to understand where your team is and not everybody's going to raise their hand or you know have a conversation at the end of the meeting, even though I'm notorious for ending calls with, is there anything else you need from me? Um, but even when I say that, there's still going to be people that prefer to write things down on the survey or give feedback in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. So it's key for us to do that as well and understand where we are in a little bit more of a metric. So it's a feedback for us as well to do that. And lastly, is our, our modern performance reviews, which is really sitting down to look at right people, right seat in a very strategic way, walking through all of our values and virtues. Are you living up to it? Are you still the right person? having those conversations, people love it. We reinforce that winning culture and those winning behaviors uh, really come through. And then 
you know, talking about where we're going to go, where their growth is on that side as part of the modern performance reviews. What is the next seat for you? Where do you want to be when you grow up, right? Like that mm-hmm. kind of conversation. And how can we help you get there? Um, and having that conversation just keeps people engaged. If they know where they're going internally, they're never looking externally and they're just locked in at that point. Uh, so we get engagement from our side for like high productivity. They get a clarity of where they're going to go and know that we're trying to help get there. At the end of the day, if you're doing all of these things, you're doing what everybody says their favorite boss does, and you're showing that you care about them. Um, and that's that's where you get the best engagement. It's just how you really do what's right by them in a fair way, not just try to pay them as little so that they stay and they're not working as little so we don't get fired, right? Mm-hmm. It's like we're, we're having different conversations. So yeah, that's that's what we're doing right now. We're, we're experimenting with other things as well. Uh, but group things are a little bit harder for us to get together, even though know, we do those as well uh, to build engagement. Like we're a fully remote shop and we are coast to coast, like from St. John's to Vancouver people uh, all across Canada. So getting together is a little bit tougher for that kind of engagement, but we try to make it work when we can. So that was right. four things. Yeah, no, no, I love it. I think, you know, at the end, when you sum it up, you know, to have a culture that actually drives engagement, that drives your business forward that you know achieves that um holy grail it's a lot of work right you know there's, there's like a million things you got to constantly be be working on you can't just kind of revisit it periodically without a constant engine moving it every day and i love the um you know drink your own champagne right test it on yourself or you test it on somebody else so that's oh my cool. HR people are ruthless if they don't like it it's great they'll give me the feedback and be like that was not good and we're like okay so we'll revisit right? that later <laughs> yeah absolutely like a company that serves people in hr spurs <laughs> judging their own hr like oof standards are pretty high there right <laughs> oh yeah no that's it and i tell them that too i'm like look we have uh, one of our bags is coming to are right i'm like just tell me how it is be straight with me um mm-hmm. on that side and don't don't sugarcoat it like don't don't belittle it but be honest with me if you don't like something let me know why right okay i love it well i really appreciate your insights tom you've given uh a lot of gems there, a lot to, to think about. And uh, hopefully people, if they are have questions about this, will reach out to Castle HR to chat. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah, perfect, Adam. Appreciate uh, you having me on. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Hey, thanks for watching The Culture Hack. Do you want to chat culture and engagement? Give us a call and come on the show.